Hello everybody, it's been a while since I've actually done a pretty substantial video. I've done a few here and there uh, over the past month or so. Mostly that's because the month of May has actually been extremely busy so far, and I just haven't really had a lot of time. I expect that to actually be the case uh, for the rest of the month of May. However, I do have a lot of things in store uh, that I hope to get to, and maybe I'll get to them in May, uh, probably more likely to happen closer to June. Uh, but I'm really excited because I finally got this package. This one is from Museum Replicas. However, it is not a deal of the day package. So I'm actually looking forward to opening it, seeing what it's like. Uh, and hopefully this will be an interesting unboxing. So we'll just go ahead and get started. It's a pretty loosely packed box because there's a box inside of here. And here it is. It's just a plain black box, but it is one of the Battle Cry swords. Which one? You'll have to see. All right. Now I actually kind of sweated over which one of these I wanted to buy because I knew I was only going to buy one of them. Um, at least for the time being. But, let's get some of these things out of the way. Here it is. There is a certificate of authenticity right here. Take a look at that in a moment. But, here is the swords. I think you can probably tell which one it is already. But we're going to get it unpackaged and take a little bit of a closer look at it. We got some things on here that I'm interested in seeing. Um, and I will say uh, this does come, unlike most windless products, it will come sharp. So I'm going to be careful while I, while I open this and make sure I don't injure myself. I did get a chance to handle this uh, at when at the uh, windless storefront in Atlanta not too long ago the uh, museum replica storefront which is of course the retail arm of windless okay let's see if I can detach the sword from the scabbard here in the packaging all right set the sword down for a moment I'm really curious about the scabbard so I'm gonna open that first I tend to open the scabbard first and leave the best part for last which is, of course, the sword. Um, but I am very curious about the, the windless scabbard because it's supposed to be kind of multifunctional, and hopefully it's a halfway decent scabbard, one that will actually hold on to the sword. I'm honestly not holding out hopes for that, uh, but I will deal with at least a somewhat more interesting and functional scabbard to some extent. So... Feeling it, just the way it feels and all of that, um, it feels like a pretty typical windless scabbard. Got some plastic here. All right. So these are some of the interesting elements of the scabbard. Uh, it actually has the finish that the sword has on it, the kind of stonewashed looking finish on both the, uh, the neck and the chape here, the throat and the chape. Um... Interesting thing though, this is a removable sword belt piece. This is what they're calling the sword frog. Uh, and so it's meant to go through a belt. And I'm not really sure why there's two. I, I honestly don't know how this is supposed to fit on a belt. I'll have to mess with it to figure it out. It seems like it would sit, uh, I'm going to stand up for this, kind of at an angle down there. It's not too bad. It's interesting. And they have this little uh, kind of... Uh, toggle piece actually on the throat that you can hook this into to make it stay although it doesn't quite reach which is interesting I'll have to mess with that it seems like the, the throat piece the metal throat piece is going to have to go down into that frog a little bit more but I'll mess with that later and I will see how well it fits in a moment before I get to the sword I'm going to open up the certificate of authenticity because there's no reason to ever need one of these but okay care and use it's a pretty standard thing that Windless sends you. And here you go. Oh, wow. 
they actually put some effort into this. Uh, so it uh, it has a lot of information about the sword itself. I'm gonna hold this up. Uh, blade material, AISI 1065, which would be a high carbon steel. Uh, they give the name of the sword. It's the Battle Cry Acre Sword. They give you stats, uh, blade thickness, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Uh, the, its part material is steel. Um, they give you blade hardness between 50 and 52 HRC. Give you the handle length, which is 4 inches, which is the right handle length. They actually tell you what date it was created on. So the 23rd of April. So that's actually only uh, not even three weeks ago. And this just got shipped into the U.S. So stateside. And then got shipped to me immediately. It was actually on back order. Um, overall length, 38 and a quarter inches. Weight, 2 pounds, 15 ounces. Kind of the standard high-ish end weight for an arming sword. Actually, I, I've handled the one in the storefront for it. It felt great. They actually give you the name of the smith who worked on it. Uh, his name is uh, Hariram. I don't know how if I'm pronouncing that right because I'm sure it's an Indian name. Hariram. H-A-R-I-R-A-M. Uh, thank you. If you ever happen to watch this video, thank you for making this sword for me. And he has 18 years of sword making experience. Interesting. And then they have a master approved Shiva Joshi. So there you go. That is an actual certificate of authenticity. Normally, I would expect it to be this kind of this kind of cheap printed, just like you bought a sword from Windless, but that actually has interesting information about the sword. Does it matter all that much? Probably not really. Let's uh, go through the process of opening this up further, though. Take off the protective tip and see what we got to do to unwrap this. Now, as always, this is just absolutely filled with grease to keep it from rusting, probably while it's being held in storage. Right, I'm gonna use my knife here to cut away these bits of plastic that I don't need. All right. So, the very first thing I wanted to check is right there. As you can see, that is actually peened. Uh, the one I saw, as I noted in my uh, hands-on experience video, uh, was actually screwed on because the one I saw was not um, a production piece. It was actually the uh, development piece, and they used it in the video with John Clements is what they told me. And I believe that now because it was certainly not reflective of what we have here now. Okay, and take this off of the blade. Now, like I said, lots of grease on this, so it needs to be cleaned off a bit. A lot. It's got a lot of grease on it. But this is the sword. So, as I uh, mentioned in my hands-on experience video, um, I felt like this actually felt pretty good in the hand. Um, feeling it now, holding on to it, thinking about it, Yes, uh, holding out, especially like this, uh, I can feel that weighs the three pounds. Um, I feel every bit of that three pounds this way. However, holding it like a sword, swinging it like a sword, it feels all right. Um, now I'm going to make some notes here, some pretty basic notes. Uh, first off, the peen actually does look pretty good. Uh, it they didn't have a lot of damage. It's not flawless, but it's, it's certainly pretty good. Um, there is, of course, the kind of standard windless gap there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a paper towel, and I'm going to clean off all this grease, and I'm going to put it in the scabbard and see how well it works. So I'm going to cut in three, two, one. And magically, I am here now with a slightly less uh, greasy and oily sword. Um, and I'm going to actually take this up close to the camera in a moment so you can actually see the texture they do with the stone wash finish. Um, again, I, it's an applique. Uh, it is not a finish directly on the steel more, so I think it is just an applique. A way they do a kind of, uh, almost like a laminating of the blade. Not too dissimilar from what a cold steel does uh, with some of their MMA line items. 
Uh, I'll tell you one thing that's interesting about the way they've sharpened this. I don't think it's a huge issue. In fact, I don't mind it at all. Is um, they have actually introduced the edge and therefore also the edge bevel actually a, a good four inches up from the, the cross here on the blade instead of taking the sharpening all the way down. It's actually good because I kind of might want to put my finger over for different grips. Um, but overall, it uh, it looks good. The the job they do in the sharpening isn't too bad at all. I'm going to see if I can find that piece of paper I threw over here. Let's see how well sharpened it is right out of the box by cutting apart the uh, care and use. So, boy, that's kind of a folded up piece of paper. Yeah, not too bad. I'm not able to hold it the best. It's kind of ripping. This is actually a pretty flimsy piece of paper and it's just kind of tearing. I don't think that's a sharpness problem, but I'll mess with it some to actually make sure. Yeah, it's all right. So I'm going to take this up close to the camera so you can actually see uh, the finish a bit. Alright, so hopefully that gave you at least an idea of what this looks like. It's really hard to just kind of show on the fly. I'm sure when I do a review of this sword, um, I'll have much, much nicer shots for you so you can see what it looks like. And let's see how it works in the scabbard. I have a feeling it's only going to fit just okay. Let's see here. So, huh, there we go. Actually, that ain't too bad at all. Look at that. It is a windless scabbard where the sword stays in. Amazing. Now, I'm wondering if that isn't because I put it, like cut it into something. Or do they actually make it all right? Yeah, no. That, that's good. Wow. So there you have it. It's like, uh, it's like discovering the lost city of Atlantis or Solomon's gold. Uh... We actually have a windless sword scabbard that fits the sword really well. So that's pretty awesome. You can probably hear my cat is in the background making all sorts of noise. Um, ignore her. She's a liar. All right. Well, there's kind of my first impression. I talked a bit about it in the other video. That's the unboxing. Um, I'm really interested to go out and really just kind of put this through its paces, try it out. And I will let you know how well it works in an upcoming review. Don't know when that will be. I've got a, another couple lined up that I want to do first. Uh, so we'll get to it eventually. Hopefully, uh, maybe this puts some people to uh, worries and fears to rest with this product line. It seems to be all right, um, at least for the price. Again, not perfect in first impressions, but all right. And like I said, the... Uh, the patterning and the stone washing is a little bit interesting. So, uh, anyway, that's it for my uh, initial impressions and thoughts and the unboxing. See you next time.